Detroit Den 313. Welcome back. Steven Will here. If you are a Detroit Lions fan, this is your place to be for Detroit Lions news, stories, content, scenarios, just everyday Lions talk. If you if that's your kind of thing, hit that subscribe button. Will, what are we talking today? Today we are going to talk about how Kirby Joseph's hips apparently lie. I was going to say don't lie, but apparently they do lie. There's a fishy story going on with his hips. I don't know what it is. Yeah, what is it? So apparently, the you know the context of this story is you know Kirby had a little off season uh, procedure. Um, he will be out until training camp. So drafts right around the corner. Um, we're going to talk about is this something to worry about? Is this going to be something that can linger around the rest of the season? Um, but I will say this: Kirby looked like he was moving pretty good yesterday at the at the jersey reveal. You know, he was doing his little <laughs> swag surf, whatever he was doing, his, his little dance. He looked okay to me. That is exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, he looked real agile yesterday. So mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, I was a little surprised that that came out. And then as I'm reading it, I'm watching him dance on stage and, you know, bop around and mm-hmm. having a good time. And I'm, you know, I'm just wondering how, how serious is this injury if he's missing, uh, if he's not going to be ready until training camp from what I heard. It should. I I would imagine, and this is literally just me speculating. So guys, don't hold me to it. But I would imagine that is probably precautionary. Probably don't want any contact. Probably don't want him going full throttle. Um, so honestly, I will say I'm thankful for the uniform ceremony even more now because seeing him out there makes me feel a lot more comfortable than if I would have just got the news and not seen him out there. I'd have been like, man, like, what's really going on? Is this something that we truly need to be worried about? But he, the only thing that I think that I I, I didn't see that I would have liked that would have made me feel 100% comfortable was a backflip. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. With cleats and on a stage, I'd rather not see a backflip. I don't know what kind of material was on that stage, but easy to slip and fall and, and, and hurt something, you know, especially yeah. when you're at the ginger age of where we are. So, I mean, <laughs> I know Kirby's a little younger and maybe in a little better shape. I don't know. Questionable. But – um. Obviously, when this news comes out, it's on Twitter. People are seeing it. People are throwing out some scenarios. Is this something that I think you're right about it being precautionary? But the question I'm going to ask is, is this something with the draft being so close that maybe we want to get shirt up in the draft just in case, maybe to have just another chess piece? I've seen the name Cooper DeJean mentioned. We just did an episode just a couple days ago about Tracy Walker, some shoring up some safety depth. How would you feel about that type of scenario where we go into draft day? Maybe safety is a little bit tad higher of a need now with Kirby being hurt. How do you feel about that? I'm looking at everything as exactly the same. I wanted Tracy Walker before this news came out. I'm hoping that we just signed Tracy Walker. I can't think of anybody in the draft other than Cooper DeJean that would interest me more than Tracy Walker. And even with, with Cooper DeJean, I, I kind of would – I like the things that Tracy Walker offers in comparison to the other guys that we have when Cooper DeJean would come in. I think that he is – even though he could be – and I'm not even saying that he is. Uh, he could be maybe a, a little bit of icing on the cake in comparison to Kirby Joseph because Cooper DeJean is somebody who's going to add to the return game as well. And he can play a little bit of corner where Kirby Joseph, you're just getting a center field safety. Uh, I like what we have in Kirby Joseph, and I, I don't like Cooper uh, DeJean enough where I would draft him for a value depth piece. My, my opinion. I'm with you. My mind hasn't changed. I'm not worried. I'm not panicking. Um, I'm not stressing out. But I will say this is just nothing to do with what's going on with Kirby's hips. But the more I watch Cooper DeJean, the more I watch his versatility, like you said, being able to play corner, able to play nickel, able to play safety, able to return some punts, some kicks, some kickoff. Like he's a Swiss army knife all around a Brad Holmes type of player that we've drafted in the past with Brian branch, who we're going to talk about in a minute. Cause he plays safety as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Cooper DeJean, but I don't think that this injury, I don't even want to call it an injury. This tweak, this little, mishap that Kirby's having I'm not panicking but it is just kind of spinning my wheels a little bit with how good of a piece Cooper DeJean could be regardless of Kirby's status or not I I think that when you're that versatile you you, you're gonna find a place to fit into the defense like regardless and you're gonna provide value 
in special teams immediately. Because I'm not going to put it, you know, out of the realm of possibility that he may be running down as a gunner on punt, too. You know what I mean? So if he's not a starter on defense, he's going to be playing special teams. And I think that he would be a, a huge piece in the special teams. You got a guy that has starting caliber abilities out there running around in, on special teams fresh, you know, if he's not in our starting 11 defensively. So I think that would be um, a huge, huge upgrade to some of our special teamers that we have running running around already that are true blue just special team, teamers currently. And I think that as a team that takes special teams pretty seriously, you know, we, we fake, we fake punts, you know, we do trick gadget plays. It, it, it's nice to have those caliber athletes. We don't kick field goals. That too. <laughs> well, I guess we can't, you know, wrap up a show about safeties and not talk about BB 32, Brian Ban- branch. Yeah. You think he's someone who could, if this is something that's going to linger around with Kirby, if this is something that drags into the season, which I don't think it will be. I know everyone's going to think that we're panicking. We're not. We're just talking about what ifs here. If, you know, Tur- Kirby tweaks something in training camp and this hip's bu- bugging him throughout the season, how do you feel about Brian Branch sliding back into that center field role? Brian Branch is just a football player, man. <laughs> Bottom line, I think Brian Branch is one of those guys, you can play him anywhere. I think you can play Brian Branch at corner in a jam. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to sit up here and say that I want him guarding other teams, number one. But if you're telling me I got to put him at backside corner because we're in a predicament, you know, I, 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 I trust him to go out there and compete. So uh, I just, we're, we're, I think that he can play free. He can play strong. He can play nickel. He can play, uh, you know, opposite of uh, the number one corner. And, you know, I, I think if you ask him to play number one, uh, while he obviously isn't going to be your best option, um, you know, if you were, pulling somebody out in the draft for that uh he's gonna go out there and compete so brian branch i think he would be just it would be um you wouldn't i wouldn't think twice about it put him out there and forget about it man no stress at all yeah i think he needs to get on the field more i don't want to see him just as a nickel i want to see him doing some other things this year he was phenomenal when he was blitzing phenomenal in coverage um, phenomenal guarding those running backs. I remember that, that game against Atlanta, he was all over B. John Robinson, Robinson like white on rice. I want to see some more of that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think if you put him in center field and kind of if Kirby has to miss some time, um, I think he would really thrive there. I think that's kind of a natural position for him. Um, but also in some interviews, Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, have kind of, especially Dan, has hinted and said some things about wanting to address another safety, getting some more safety depth, um, whether that's Tracy Walker, like we talked about before, or Cooper DeJean. I think we're going to do something in the draft. I just don't know when, don't know where, don't know who it'll be. Um, the only position I'm good with at 29 safety wise, player wise, I mean, would be a Cooper DeJean, like an end of list. But Brad has kind of said that's kind of a route that we might have to go um, in, in getting some more depth at safety. Yeah, I, I think it'll be Tracy Walker or, uh, a free agent signing. I don't think that it'll be in the draft. I think that we're looking at uh, the kid out of Utah. He's had multiple visits with the Lions. He's a guy that's going to contribute on special teams, and maybe in three seasons he might be a guy that can uh, take some take some starting snaps potentially. But I think he's a guy that's going to offer some depth and offer some uh, some special teams, high level abilities. Played running back. Played safety. Sione uh, Vakai, Vaki, yeah, Va- Vaki, yeah, yeah, Vaki, man. He's a, uh, I-, I think he's a guy, uh, kind of like a utility knife again, man. Just a a weapon that can do multiple things. If you you could fake punts with him, you could do trick plays with him. You know, I I, I think he he's probably gonna end up a Detroit Lion in a later later rounds. You think that's who they got their eyes on? Yeah, instead late. of a Cooper. Uh, I just think Cooper's going to be gone, man. And I, I just don't see Cooper being the type of player that we would trade up and go get. I think he's good. And maybe if he was there at 29, he could be, I know not to, not to leak into my draft board, but he's on my draft board at pick 29, but he's, uh, he's not at the top of the list. So I don't know. I can't see with that kind of thought process. If you're not even at the top of my draft board for guys that I want at pick 29, then I gotta imagine that we're not trading up and and losing on um, pieces to go get them. You think Brad Holmes has maybe pulled aside uh, Jack Campbell or a Sam Laporta and asked him about Cooper Dejean? Hey, 
you guys were teammates with him not too long ago. What's this guy like? What's his work ethic? What can he do? What can he not do? Like, be honest with me. No bullshit. You think Brad's had those kind of conversations with, with Jack and, and Sam? I think it's a no brainer. 100%. You have to, you almost have to. And we know what we got in those two. We got two captains from Iowa. So if you're going to get the truth from any two guys and, if you're going to respect any two guys opinion, it would be those two guys. So, yeah, I think I think they're they're running an awesome program out there. I I, I don't worry about no. Cooper's. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't worry about Cooper's. Uh, I was def- I was known for defense. Their offense. Eh, it's a, it's amazing. Sam Laporta was in that offense because Iowa was a stinker when it comes I just, to the yeah. offensive side of the football. Yeah, I just mean like the NFL pedigree that they're putting into the league, man. They're putting in some tough guys, obviously, at the tight end position, but they're putting in some DNs. They're putting in linebackers, obviously. They're uh, they're they're doing some good things out there. And so I'm not worried about uh, the professionalism of a guy that we're going to get in Cooper DeJohn. But uh, it's just he's just, uh, you know, a few few names down my draft board. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, I think if Brad has a leg up on any player in this first round, it's probably Cooper DeJohn, given the fact that Sam Laporta played offense at Iowa. Cooper DeJohn played a little offense, played some wide receiver. They kind of uh, moved him back to defense, thought that he'd be a little better suited, make their strong suit even stronger where he played with Jack Campbell. So both of those players is why we bring that up is both of these guys have been in the huddle with him. Both of these guys have been on the practice field with him in offense, defense. So Brad Holmes probably has more insight about Cooper DeJean than any other GM in the NFL, if I had to guess. So um, I guess if he's the guy, we have we have to kind of trust what, what those conversations were. Yeah, I say that same thing with uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry and uh, Terry on Arnold as well. And, you know, the guy that's, that's probably going to be at our reach, uh, Dallas Turner. But, you know, he's like, hey, Gibby, J-Mo, what's these guys like, man? Where, where, where are they like outside of the no football? Brian Branch, you know? just, um, I ain't going to bother to ask him. No, I wouldn't ask Brian Branch because Brian Branch <laughs> walks around like this. <laughs> Stone Cold which I'm, <laughs> I'm, which I'm okay with Brian do your thing baby do your thing but Brian Branch is about his business he's liable to say I don't know man I was in a gym I was working I don't know yeah. No. yeah point is we just got some inside scoops on on some, on some other schools you know Brad has a, a history of drafting Alabama players and he's slowly developing a history of drafting some Iowa players so I think we got a little inside scoop on both teams um, we, we've been very draft heavy from those those two colleges so, I mean, it's nice to have that little, you know, nugget of knowledge in Brad's back pocket. Yeah, man. Yeah. But wrapping it back to uh, Kirby, man, what's your worry level from a scale of one to ten? Two. Only because it's only a two because I don't know exactly what the injury is. Things can get tweaked. I know he's got plenty of time. He's got like what, like three months before training camp even happens. And he was out dancing around yesterday. So my, my injury, it would be a one, but just because I know you can tweak something real easy. Um, but this guy has the top of the line trainers, top of the line doctors. I'm sure everything's going to be fine before they clear him for any type of football activity. So really it's a one, but the fan in me says something could happen. Something could get tweaked. It's a two. What about you? Uh, about the same, maybe a little less only because <laughs> Even if something is tweaked, I feel like we got it covered. I, I, I hope that we sign Tracy Walker, even if we didn't, though. I trust Ify Melifon, Will, and Brian Branch to figure it out. Uh, I like our cornerback depth, and we're probably going to draft a corner in this draft here um, in a few days. So uh, I'm not too worried about it at all, man. You could easily um, get it done with, you know, Amik and um, Emmanuel Mosley bump Brian Bratch back there for a little bit. And then you got if you Melifon Wu. So I think we have some answers. We have a little bit of a uh, flexibility to be able to get some things done, even if he was banged up for a little bit, but them saying that he'll be back for training camp and they're not even talking about the season. Um, that, that gives me a warm and fuzzy. Yeah. I'm not worried at all. Uh, this will all be taken care of. We have plenty of depth and I think you're right. We're going to be drafting a corner somewhere in this draft, probably somewhere in the ballpark of 29 and his name might be Kool-Aid McKinstry. <laughs> maybe never know but hey if we if we do we do man I, it's not again it's not that i don't like him it's just he's he's a you little bit further down my, my draft board as well just say you don't like him you can be honest no i like him i like this game man i think he's tough man it's just uh my draft board is kind of it's kind of dialed in it kinda is dialed in. getting ready for our mock here in a couple days i will tell you this steve today was the last day that i think i uh needed to watch any film. I think I got it pretty dialed in. If we needed a draft today, uh, I think I have contingencies for how this thing may fall 
up, down, sideways, backwards. Uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, get it here. Get us to draft day. Brad, give me a call if you need any advice. I'm pretty Brad, much I'm, advice. I'm also pretty much locked in. Like I know we're doing our mock. We'll have that out uh, Wednesday before the draft. Give you guys some time to mull it over. We'll have, have some you know time to have that up for you guys to watch and have some discussion about it before draft day when everyone's you know tuning in on ESPN or or hitting the road, getting on the highway, heading toward mm-hmm. Detroit where we'll be. So yeah, I'm pretty much dialed into and I'm ready to get that uh, get that out there and see what people think. Either call us idiots or or call us heroes. I don't know which one it'll be yet. No doubt, man. No doubt. Speaking of that, um. Before we wrap this up, I just want to put this out here for those of you who have stuck around, stuck around. Guys, we're going to be doing giveaways. Mm. Oh, you, be, you got a jersey there? We're going to be doing giveaways. Oh, we're, going, we're going to be. I got, I got a couple back here. One second. We're going to be. Yeah, we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some giveaways. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are we yeah. doing here, Will? Yeah, we're going to be. Jerseys on jerseys? Gonna, yeah, jerseys on jerseys. Maybe got, some more in the back? Yeah, we got jerseys. <laughs> We got Jersey. So uh, we were down there at the Jersey reveal, man. We, we got, we got Jersey. Yeah, man. We got jerseys for you guys, man. So uh, we're going to be giving those away over the next couple of weeks. So make sure if you haven't became a member, make sure you become a member. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you come, you know, you become a subscriber because uh, that's how you're going to get automatically into these raffles for these jerseys. It's not going to cost you anything except your membership and a subscription. That's it. So, you got anything else for him, Steve? Nope, that's it, baby. Let's wrap it up. All right, that's we're gonna wrap it up for today. We'll be back with some more content. Give it to him, Steve. You do your piece. No, you're gonna give it to him. Peace. <laughs>